There's something about a black man that like calms me like that that brings me down that makes me want to submit that makes me want to like just chill you know what i'm saying all that bitchiness that i have all that attitude that i have it kind of goes away when a black man enters my space if that makes sense hey my sweet babies <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Miss D with Size of a Podcast. If you're looking at the visuals, you see that I got my new sign with me. It kind of overshadows everything, but I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy the sign is here. This sign has been in the making, honey. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? This sign has been in the making. This motherfucker's been around. It's been around the block in the world at this point. Mm-hmm. Yes, it has. So, <laughs> today's topic, if you guys can stop staring at my hair and how atrocious it looks. <laughs> I want to get my hair like this because I don't want people to be coming up to me in public like y'all been doing. Talking about some you don't look the same on the podcast like you look in real life. Honey, I like to dress homeless in real life. Yes, I do. Just like this. This is my regular form. I like to look homeless. I like to look regular because I am regular. A bitch like me ain't rich by a long shot. I damn sure don't want to dress like it. I don't, you know, a lot of our, our community, you know, the black community, we all oh, chasing the Jordans and the Prada and the Gucci and the you know whatever the fuck vitamins is y'all be chasing all this shit standing at the bus stop <laughs> or not even standing at the bus stop just catching a ride from somebody else y'all y'all got your priorities fucked up but that's not miss d miss d likes to wear clothes from walmart pretty sure this is from walmart uh i don't think my jeans is from fashion over Fashion over to me is expensive, but the only reason why I buy from them is because I feel like the quality of the clues matches the price. That's the only reason. Other than that, shit, I'll be Walmart down to the T. I also like that. You're right. This is not a fucking ad for Fashion Nova, but I like the way their jeans are lengthy. Whatever. You get it. Okay. So I actually wrote down some notes about today's topic because... Basically, I can understand why different communities do not like African-Americans, you know, black folk. I can understand why different communities don't like us as a whole. You know, you got those couple of motherfuckers that you might fuck with. But as a whole, I agree. I, too, do not like you motherfuckers. I'm not going to lie. Actually, I don't like people at all, but, you know, I don't like people at all. Let's be honest. I don't like people, but I could understand. And today I want to dissect my understanding of why the fuck people don't like black people. Because, I mean, I feel like we're beautiful people, like, on the outside. Um, I love the culture. And I'm sure to, as do other cultures. You know, the dances, the movement we have, the influence. I think all of that is super beautiful. I, I love it when we come together. I love all of that. I love the natural hairstyles like myself. I, the men, of course, just the biology, the anatomy, the whatever, the physical being of the black body is a temple. I want to start that off, you know, nice and respectful first. Nice and honest. We got to admit. Okay. Let's not sleep on the black people. But I want to talk about why motherfuckers don't like us. And I wrote a list. So I'm about to get to that list. Uh, you know what? Before I get to the list, let me start with where this thought came from. Right? What inspired this episode? <laughs> right? Because, of course, I, there's always an inspiration for all my episodes for the most part. Unless I don't come up with it. Like, unless I'm not writing it or whatever. But, yes. I have a, what do you call that? 
inspiration a story okay let me let me get to it let me take one more sip and get to it so i am working right and i asked someone that i was working with if they could do something for me now it was a part of their job okay i'm not asking anything out of the ordinary this is what they were hired to do okay <laughs> Vex is about to do something for me. Um, and I realized that he, um, how I put this, that we're mixed, you know, where I work at. And so I just realized that uh, compared to others, there was, a, there's a shift in attitude, you know, um, with his demeanor, the way he carries himself, the way he responds to me, the way he responds to other, the, the way he walk around, you know what I mean? Now, what do I mean by that? Because at the end of the day, we have this thing on the internet where they say like, you know, black people walk around with like this resting bitch face or they just, they look, they look unpleasant, you know, they, they look disgruntled all the time, um, and which I agree with, and honestly, I could admit that that's a that's me too. I'm I'm constantly disgruntled and everything. I agree. Um, but no matter how disgruntled I look, I always, always attempt to remain respectful, um, and strive for excellence in everything I do. So. This person always looks disgruntled and I asked them to, you know, do something for me that was a part of their job, literally with their heart to do. Um, and it was a lot of like a little like a lot of attitude and miscommunication going on. So when I approach a black man, um, there's something about a black man that like calms me like that, that brings me down, that makes me want to submit, that makes me want to like just chill you know what i'm saying all that bitchiness that i have all that attitude that i have it kind of goes away when a black man enters my space if that makes sense um i hope that makes sense so basically as i approach this man i'm always calm i'm always melancholy neutral um by default just because i entered the presence of a black man aka a king okay cool let's just get into it um, but he ended up not helping me. What happened was we, because <laughs> I'm trying not to give too much information, but I, I want to tell this story because it inspired me. But what happened is there was a miscommunication between the two of us. Um, I don't think he understood. Well, he knows what I was asking him to do, but I don't, it's just, there was no communication. Um, he, he didn't attempt like he made it seem like he knew what I was talking about he knew what I wanted and when it came down to it it was like it just didn't get done and it just kind of ended up with like him just storming off with like just no explanation like it was just it was weird um but and in, instead of me getting upset um instead of me cursing him the fuck out instead of me going to the superiors instead of me doing anything I just politely just walked, well, you know, exited the situation as well. And then just asked someone else who was happy to, to assist me. And that person just happens to be a caucus mountaineer. Now, I, and it inspired me because this guy is older, gray hairs. Um, and, and, and not that, like most people who have gray hairs and, and are old are disgruntled. That's honestly, I believe that comes with age, their body hurts, they're tired, they're over this shit, whatever. Things are going on at home, things are going on in your marriage, whatever it may be. Um, and, and, and his response and the way he handled me inspired me. And so we're going to get into it. The first thing I was thinking, I was like, damn, I can see why other races don't like black people or other cultures don't like black people or why black people don't like black people i could see 
Um, and here's what I came up with because I wrote it. I jotted this shit down as soon as this happened. I'm like, we, 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 as a, as a people, as a black people, we take, we have a lack of accountability, lack of social skills, the attitude problem is outrageous, lack of compassion, lack of knowledge. We're loud and we're aggressive. I mean, let's get into it. These are things. Should I break down? I'm going to break down each thing. Fuck it. I'm going to break down each thing and, and what I mean. Okay. Cause I, I want, I want to be thorough here. I want to be thorough here. Um, Okay. So, I mean, some of these things, I don't have to be there, but we're going we're gonna to get, get to it. So, lack of accountability. Um, I find myself doing this as well. It's like, if we do something wrong, whether it's intentional or not, and in, you know, unintentional, whatever. It's like, not everyone is able to be like, you know what? I fucked up. You know what? Like, I, I fucked up. Um... I apologize. I'll try to do better next time. You know what I mean? Like, it's always a fight with us, honestly. Like, like for instance, I, and I find myself doing this because I'm working on my accountability because it's only right. Um, it's like, if I, I do it right away, though. I do it in the moment. I try to. So, like, if um, if someone asks me a question, say I'm at work or I'm in a professional setting or just a general setting, whatever, um, and um, they, somebody asks me something, but I'm not, I'm subconsciously like just in my mind thinking about something like maybe thinking about something about at home or struggles or whatever, my car problems, whatever. Um, and somebody may ask me, someone may ask me a question and I kind of give like a snappy response. It's not like I'm doing it on purpose or I want to be a bitch. It's just like in that moment, it came off wrong. I, that happens to me a lot. I'm very misunderstood. So, but when I realized, like, oh shit, like I didn't have to say it like that, or I didn't have to use those exact words in that in that manner, whatever. And so I'll say, oh, you know what? I do apologize. That was that was a bit aggressive. I do that, me personally, like while it's happening. I like, you know what? I apologize. That was a bit aggressive. What I kind of mean is so on and so forth. Um, and I've seen black men do that because you know i work in an industry where a lot of men are anyway but i've seen black men do that um does it happen a lot i think it could happen more i do i do think it could happen more um and of course the women don't even get me started on the women come on we all know that black women are just not fucking accountable don't even count on that don't count on accountability when it, when it comes to black women don't do it um for the most part, I'm not going to say everyone because that's very inconsiderate. But for the most part, it just seems like, you know, we we react to our emotions first and it be what it be. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if I need to elaborate on that more because I just feel like that's like just known. Like we're just we just lack accountability as a people. Social skills uh, kind of goes along with with accountability. We like i just explained this earlier it's just like the rushing the rest the resting bitch face the looking angry the 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 relaxed face um some of us got a little eyebrow action going on like um we look angry when we're probably just curious or hurting or whatever i don't know we just look angry stomach could be hurting look angry <laughs> and wife just cussed, cussed us all look angry um just stuff my toe look angry um I don't know it's just like I don't know it's the demeanor of a black person and to be honest because we are I'm just going to skip ahead and go to an aggressive because I you know goes in line with what I'm about to say because we are physically superior in my opinion it's like that that aggression that 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 non-welcomeness it's intimidating <laughs> oh it's intimidating so it's like come on everyone for the most part people know without any training um without any course uh you know extensive boxing training ufc training taekwondo whatever whatever without any training i just feel like we are superior physically strength wise and so when we don't look welcoming, when we don't look happy, when we don't look, you know, 
neutral, when we don't look non-aggressive, which is hard to do, we just come off as aggressive. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I tried to explain this to someone before. Like I'm a, I'm a black woman. I'm dark skin. I'm tall and I'm thick. I'm automatically intimidating to the average man who is say a size 30 <laughs> uh five six um skinny in stature you know what i mean bird chest automatically i'm intimidating because i'm just larger doesn't matter the fact that i'm a woman or he might well likely he's going to be able to overpower me because he's a man and men are built differently but i just come off as intimidating and then you add the intimidation to the fact that i am black and i have that wretched resting bitch face and i'm an asshole like I don't I don't want I don't I said this before I don't want to do the small talk I don't want to talk to you I don't want to know how your mother is fuck all that you know what I'm saying like so mix all these things together a lot of times it either seems like I'm flirting or I'm ready to whoop your ass but that is how I come off and I'm not going to change myself to make you fucking comfortable I'm not going to hmm, all the fucking time. I'm not doing that. Life is shitty. My car just got towed this morning. You know what I'm saying? Life is shitty. I'm broke. Life is shitty. So no, I don't want to fucking walk around and, and fake pretend just to make you fucking feel good. No. Let's get straight to the point. I'm here to do X, Y, and Z. This is what's going to happen. Now I got to go that's it um yeah that's straight how it is i get that a lot oh you don't look at you know I me mean? or you da, 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 da. no fuck that i came here to do something it's done i did it well see you tomorrow <laughs> you know what i'm saying like no so I, I don't believe in the whole change, my whole demeanor, my whole everything just to make the next person uncomfortable. If I'm happy to be here, you're going to know it. If I'm not happy to be here, you're going to know it. I'm one of those people where I will wear my emotions on my, you know, on my outside. I don't want to change that. I'm cool with it. If I look like don't talk to me, that's probably because I don't want you to talk to me. Let's be honest. Next. Cover three so far, right? Three out of six. Yep, three out of, oh, three out of seven. Okay, attitude. Come on, that goes right along with everything else. It goes right along with everything else. There's a lot of people who are incapable. Like they have anger issues type shit. Um, they're, they're incapable of controlling them fucking selves. I don't know. Or, or... <laughs> I just feel like our attitude mostly comes with this. But a lot of times the black people, they're angry because life is shitty. You're being discriminated against or you've grown up in the projects all your life or your mom dislikes you or you feel like you dislike your mom, whatever. Things are going on in your family. Things are going on financially. Um, your credit's shitty. Everything's hard, like hard as fuck for you. Um, and these hurdles that you have to jump over in society it's just taking a toll on you so it's like a lot of times you know i get it 100 percent, obviously but that's a downfall and a lot of us is not willing to change it like myself i feel like there are some qualities that i have as a black person that protects me and i don't plan on getting rid of them but i'm also a super big goofball I'm also super nice to certain people. I'm also like when you do approach me, when you gain enough courage to approach me, I'm actually very nice. I'm actually very, very sweet. Um, and I, I think mostly only black men um, will understand that about me. I don't know, like or just like men in general, because women see me, they're just like, "Ooh, this bitch, she big and she look angry like <laughs> 
but it's like no i'm really a goofball and i have this persona on me because i joke way too fucking much and my my jokes and my mouth gets me in trouble so i just tend to like just not say anything or you know just keep it cute because that protects me like that whatever i have set up right now is 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 a is a defense mechanism and it's been working for me so me being quiet short to the point you know what i mean with 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 society as a whole has been working for me because when i'm too happy and i'm joe and i'm and i'm sitting there you know joking with everyone and trying to make everyone laugh because i love to make people laugh um it, that doesn't seem to work out well next thing you know, i'm getting called in someone's office or i'm getting ridiculed or whatever the fuck so this has just been working for me and i'm sure a lot of people can relate like this is just working it's just working it's better just you know i have a nasty little sense of humor <laughs> so it's just best if we just keep it cute um a lack of compassion i like i feel like obviously we lack compassion because of the things we're going through it's very hard to i think i said this before i always say that right um but it's very hard to feel bad for a person who is going through something when you're going through something like like as a as a community you know like like life is just hard all together but as a community you know we kind of go through uh, to my in my opinion in our opinion it's just like these extra hurdles um and i can't it's hard for me to feel bad for someone or the next person and i'm going through shit you know like if we both get stabbed who you think so i don't know some people are like that like if we're if we both got stabbed i'm i'm gonna think about myself first I, I just think most people are like that. Um, there are some that are like, maybe they could take the stab, depending on where it's coming from, and you just like, you're dying out, whatever. I don't know, that was a bad analogy, but um, I do, I don't think we lack compassion as a whole for, I, I don't know, just, that's my opinion. Um, lack of knowledge. Motherfuckers be ignorant. Motherfuckers be ignorant. Like, motherfuckers be ignorant. I can't express it enough. We got this thing where, oh shit, I broke a fucking nail. Oh my gosh, I gotta go get them done tomorrow. Um, we have this thing where, oh, how I put this? Because I just broke a nail, so hold on, let me <laughs> refocus. Because that was crazy. All right, lack of knowledge. Um, we have this thing where we don't quite, and it, and it ties into compassion, we don't quite all of us don't think before we speak everything all together kind of ties into each other it's it's the lack of it's the lack of knowledge that causes us to have the lack of accountability causes us not to have good social skills causes us to have the anger issues and not you know being able to control them causes us to have the lack of compassion uh, compassion causes us to be aggressive which is also goes into the attitude and, and, and whatever um it, it's just a lack of knowledge all together you know what I'm saying? I should have saved that one for last. But it's a lack of knowledge altogether. I think that if, if as a people, we were just a little bit more educated, more, a little bit more self-aware, a little bit more um, understanding, a little bit more everything, just had more knowledge, then probably things would be better. I mean, we're as a society, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're educating each other, you know, as millennials and Gen Z and, and boomers or whoever the fuck else, generations. Um, we're getting there as a society. We're trying to educate each other, but we got a long way to go because um, millennials are only approximately 35, 25 to 35 or something like that right now in 2024, January. I'm sorry, February, whatever. Uh, 2024, um, we're still pretty young <laughs> and we, we got a long way to go as a society as a people all together um across cross racial cross cultural um and then of course we're loud you see but when, when I, <laughs> we're loud but like not really okay because i'm gonna i'm gonna push back on myself with that one because um when i'm comfortable i could be loud um when i am reprimanding my child i could be loud um I, but I'm not really a loud person. And I think when I was thinking loud, I was thinking like those ratchet bitches that be out there in the world, you know, like on the phone or hanging out with their girls or so 
you know, sitting on the edge of car window doors, whatever, yelling and woohoo, bitch, and this, you know, like, or just, of course, when you're aggressive, you get loud or whatever. Like, that's what I was thinking about. But, um, I think that's cross racial because I remember when I was living in Boston as a teenager and I would sit on the bus and I would realize that the foreigners like were the loudest. I never liked that about them. But I love, I love, you know, other cultures when I get to know them, uh, more specifically the Hispanic culture. Um, but they were loud as fuck. They were louder than the black people. So I'm pushed back on myself a little bit with that one. Um, let's see. Okay, so I put on here, we were raised by a generation who went through the crack of a, uh, let me slow down. Would you like that? Would you like me for me to slow down? All right, I will. We were raised by a generation who went through the crack epidemic or participated in it. What does that mean? All right, what do I mean by that? So when I, when I look at people who are born in, say, the 80s or early 90s, when, when I when I when I see those people, a big portion of us, especially black people, our parents were on drugs. Either our parents or our grandparents or just our caregivers, guardians, whatever. They were likely on drugs. And if it wasn't drugs, it might have been alcohol. Um, it might have been prostitution. It might have been a lot of shit because at the end of the day. Uh, the crack epidemic was a tough time for everyone, whether they seen someone get hurt or maybe they were a victim of crime because of, you know, maybe a crackhead wanted to come and take their stuff, you know, to get a rock, whatever that uh, like a lot happened to our community at that time. And we have to be understanding and slightly compassionate um, that whoever those people were that raised the generation that I'm talking, like I'm speaking of, you know, people who were born in the nineties and eighties and shit, the seventies too, because at that time they were like just teenagers or kids, whatever. Um, like those people who raised those people, they didn't know better or they were going through things mentally, physically, drug related, whatever. And so when a person's on drugs that affects children obviously that affects children um and like just could you just imagine like expecting I, like i don't even know the stories i couldn't even tell you the stories because when i was a kid thank goodness i didn't i don't think i had to go through that or at least i didn't notice that i was going through that so it's like maybe I was I was also late 90s you know hopefully they were getting over it somewhat at that time like the crack epidemic so it just got to a point where anyone who was older than me I have to kind of consider like their trauma and then we have this thing in the community where we don't really like to go to therapy so we're dealing with this trauma we're carrying on us throughout our whole lives maybe we don't feel like we need help or whatever um and i just i just have to be considerate of like the toll that takes on a person and even though i i it's easy for me to say you know what who gives a fuck they should have known better to just go get some help or should they, they should have known to just get over it or they should have known to go get some help they should have known something and they chose not to so no there's no excuse the world doesn't give a fuck what you're going through which i agree with the world does not give a fuck what you're going through however i just put in my little list that black people weren't compassionate and i'm trying to be compassionate and i'm trying to be understanding that the people that raised these people that i am now encountering probably did them dirty they probably have been you know assaulted in and in, in several different ways what, what what is the uh names of assault mentally sexually emotionally financially physically um so they've probably been assaulted in one way or another or multiple ways um they probably seen some things they probably seen a death in front of them they probably accidentally you just never know what a person's going through or what a person went through so when i saw when i saw that man 
and he was just disgruntled off rip I was like you know like maybe he's going through something and it's hard for me to do that because like I said that's that's like what is that empathy or some shit so it's hard for me to do that because I like I'm going through so fucking much right now and it's kind of hard for me to take myself out of my own bullshit and kind of think like okay I can I can give this person grace because they're going through something too or they're probably going through something too I don't know um so yeah those people they've been through some shit just likely not guaranteed but likely they were raised by motherfuckers who was on that shit motherfuckers was selling tvs for twenty dollars just to get a rock she was crazy they was out there probably taking catalytic converters fucking engines out of cars and shit just to get a rock could you imagine your fucking mechanic is on drugs and now he's taking apart your whole fucking car and selling the shit off for fucking dirt cheap just so he can get high should be crazy uh next note i wrote down is that that generation was raised by people who are raised sorry you wanted me to slow down i apologize there we go again that generation was raised by people who were raised <laughs> by those likely in slavery and so on so before the crack epidemic right what were black people going through right <laughs> that's what i was thinking and the people that were on the crack were probably raised by people who had to struggle in a different way um there's a guy on the internet pretty fucking trendy right now who says that he lived down south and his bathroom was outside i gotta i couldn't even fathom but what the fuck does that even mean i couldn't fathom you know what i'm saying so like just environmental financial societal everything that that black people had to go through even before the crack epidemic even before you know all of this we like we just been through a lot of things as a society as a a, a culture as a as a people as black people we've been through a lot over the last several centuries decades so on and so forth so even if you know like just you know just like generations so before the current pandemic we was going through something else and those people were probably fucked up mentally emotionally whatever and it's hard to pour into someone else's bucket when your bucket is empty um and your bucket is definitely empty if you've suffered a lot of trauma through your life and you don't know how to handle it or you don't know how to regulate or you regulate your emotions or regulate your feelings or try to break generational curses. And there's a lot of us that broke generational curses and I commend us for that. I really do because I do. I see the black people that walk around these days and we're so open and we're so woke and we're so we're evolving, but there's still work to be done. Cause we still ratchet as a motherfucker. I'm not gonna lie. Some of y'all need to get y'all shit together. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Oh, there was the next t um bullet point. I guess there is a lot of trauma in history which trickles down time and time again. That's basically what I just said in so many words. Um. Before. <laughs> you know martin luther king and malcolm x and we were segregated and blah 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 whites only the colors and negroes and discrimination and we've been through a lot so it just trickles down like the shit i've went through the trauma i went through i'm doing my best not to trickle it down to my daughter um but some shit's gonna seep through eventually like we're just human so as we're evolving like some shit's going to seep through and, and and whatever does seep through a little bit i'm going to try to educate her in such a way that it won't again seep through to her children you know what i'm saying um so we're evolving i respect that but you know this trauma be trickling down so i i'm trying to just be understanding that's it um next bullet lots of blacks don't know how to articulate their thoughts and emotions because they were raised by blacks who were uneducated due to slavery i don't think it's only due to slavery i think that's probably maybe where it started or something i don't know but have you ever noticed like black people like down south or older 
black people just sound like just completely uneducated they don't know how to speak right they don't know how to pronounce words right <laughs> like did you guys not notice that like when, when, like, <laughs> when the older people say mo control like just mo control is just cringy so like what do you mean mo control like it's just some things that we say like our elders say it's just like you know what i mean like you could just it's not a it's not a funny thing it's not it's funny to us yes but it's not like a funny thing for them it's not like something they're just choosing to say it's not something fun it's like no they just they don't know they don't they don't know it's 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 just ignorance lack of knowledge um yeah it gets down to that they don't know how to say shit like um at one point hosmic maneuver hosmic maneuver we just don't know that's okay i guess but it, it just what it, it is what it is i think my last bullet point is we still face discrimination today with lack of opportunity and that was my last bullet okay so i, I don't know if, I, if this needs to be explained um but i'm sure as I applied for jobs throughout the years, people look, look at my real ghetto ass name. Um, let's just say my fucking name is Deandrene. Guarantee you Molly ain't walking around with that. You know what I'm saying? Like you could just kind of tell. You could just kind of tell different cultures through the names alone. So I'm sure there's jobs i've personally applied to that they were like who the fuck is this no fucking thank you no fucking thank you in some in some workplaces in some work environments we might not even be a good fit it's a good thing they have these things in place now where like you have to hire a certain amount of black people, a certain amount of black women, a certain amount of white people, a certain amount of Hispanic people, Asians, multicultural, whatever. They actually have laws and shit or guidelines in place, whatever, which is great, which is great because I've seen some shit. <laughs> I've seen some places where it's like, oh, no, y'all should put some black people in here. <laughs> like I'm here for um, exception <laughs> for sure. Like, for sure, for sure. Like, yeah, some places need that shit. It gets deep. Um, then you have the fact that not that that's just one form of discrimination is, like, through jobs. You got discrimination, I'm sure, through houses, through bank loans, through, you know. I heard at, at one point that there are still communities, like, housing communities where, or Maybe there were recently. I can't remember. But I heard it at some point there were still housing communities where, you know, till this day, if you move in and you're a multicultural family or African-American family, um, they look at you crazy or they're going to make you uncomfortable or they're going to whisper behind your back. They're going to, you know what I'm saying? Like it, legally, they can't discriminate, but morally, you know, they can do whatever the fuck they want for real, for real. They could think whatever the fuck they want to think about you. They could not invite you to, I don't want to say the cookout because I don't know if they have cookouts like that, but they could not invite you to casserole dinner on Tuesday nights. They could do whatever the fuck they want to do. They can be inconclusive. And what is that word called? Uninclusive? Whatever. You get it. Um, so they could do whatever they want. I discriminate against people all the time. <laughs> I discriminate against people all the time because honestly, I just don't like people. I don't like the company of people for the most part. I'm scared of y'all. I get hurt too much. It's trauma. It's a trauma response of just me not liking people. So I discriminate all the time. I don't even, I don't, I think the last time I had a party was like my daughter's sixth birthday party. Like, and that was probably, I've had probably maybe like three parties in my whole fucking life. Like that I've thrown i'm surprised people came but it was nice you know for sure for sure people came out they supported me i love that thank y'all for that if y'all listen to this at any point but yo what P 
people scare the fuck out of me i really think they're out to get me i'm not gonna lie i can't be like the only one that thinks this either um so yes um if this airs during black history month happy black history month if it airs during no it probably won't air during Romans month let's be honest whatever wherever this airs <laughs> power to y'all but y'all gotta y'all gotta resolve y'all shit because in all actuality nobody cares about our our problems nobody cares about what we're going through nobody cares about that your fucking kid just got suspended or expelled and now you gotta figure out a no school nobody cares that you just didn't pay your rent nobody cares nobody cares as a whole we don't care about your personal problems but especially if you're coming like to work or you're coming to do a job or you know any fucking thing shit if you on a train i don't give a fuck about your problems we all got problems. We all got issues. So, shit, if you, especially if you got anger issues, you need to go to therapy. I ain't gonna lie. So, the fuck? Go to therapy, nigga. Mm -hmm. But that is my segment for today. Um, Just to kind of break it down. I ain't say shit that we all don't know. And I probably could have done my research a little bit more as far as like the history part. But y'all gonna be all right. You'll be all right. Um, but yeah, I can see why people don't like black people. I can see it. Shit, I don't even like y'all motherfuckers. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Love us, but don't like us. Does it make sense? I could love someone and not like them. People say that shit all the time about kids. It is what it is. Love you to death. Will do anything for you. Don't like your ass. Stay over there. Go to your room. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Sides of the Podcast. I do appreciate you tuning in for sure, for sure. Um, even though you probably didn't like what I had to say, but you probably never like what I had to say because what I had to say is always off the fucking. Wow. That was deep. Okay whatever the light just went off but it's okay we're gonna continue because there's still light here and i was just closing out whoops and now i hit the glass okay maybe i'm getting a little drunk all right anyway thank you guys for tuning in sorry for whatever um you can follow me on all social media platforms have a great day night day and night uh, uh. all right i did it again i should stop doing that okay thank you bye